what's up guys it's parallax abstraction and welcome to pxa peaks at immortal redneck ah that's about the most redneck humor you're gonna get out of me for this i had a whole bit in my head lined up and then i got to it and i was just like uh no it's just it's too easy so yes here we are i haven't made a video in a little while i know life has been crazy there'll be something on twitter about that at some point soon but I'm finally getting to this. I got code for this a little while ago, and I really wanted to talk about it. This comes to us from a small team in Spain called Crema. I think it's how you pronounce it. Sorry if I'm butchering that. They are principally a mobile developer, but they decided to make a bit of a bigger project. And this is what they came up with. It's another roguelite. I know there's so many of these these days, but as someone who's kind of come to really enjoy this genre, I'm sort of glad for it, really. And the way they actually pitched this to me is that this is an amalgamation of Serious Sam and Ziggurat. Ziggurat is a game I never did a video on, but it is one of my favorite roguelites. It is a fan friggin tastic game. And when I heard something like that, I was like, ooh, okay, I'm very interested in that. So, yeah, I'll, there is a story to this. It doesn't really matter, but I'll talk about that after. So... I'm starting out here, so this is a run-based game because it is a roguelite, so you pick your different classes. Redneck is sort of the default one. There's nine classes in this game that you unlock as you go. And you get different starting weapons, and as you can see, different abilities and different skills and, and different statistics here that, that changes things quite a, quite a bit. So we're going to pick uh, just the default redneck guy here to start. So the story of this, there's an intro video to this that unfortunately it doesn't look like you can replay unless you start a whole new game, which is kind of weird. But basically, you're a redneck, you get killed, and you're trying to fight your way out of the afterlife or something like that. This takes place in ancient Egypt. You're trying to fight your way to the top of these uh, various different pyramids here, which have bosses in them, and that what gets you to win. Something like that. So... As you go through your different runs, there's actually quite a bit of depth to this. So as you go through each of your individual runs, you will earn gold. And you have to spend... This This plays much like if you want a real good roguelite analog to what this is, is something like Rogue Legacy, which was a very, very popular one of these. This is very much like this. So you get this gold. You can see I earned 1,175 gold on my last run. And you can spend it on all of these different upgrades, which are permanent. So it gets fairly granular, so you can upgrade your defense, your health, your uh, attack rate, your critical percentage chance, your critical damage, uh, you can get better ammo, and eventually you can unlock different classes as well, which does require you to reach certain, uh, certain levels in the tree in order to pull that off. And any money you don't spend after a given run, you lose. You don't get to carry it forward, which is very much like Rogue Legacy, so you want to really spend all this if you can. So, but because these are permanent, this game starts off extremely hard. And frankly, even though I'm a few hours in, it's still pretty bloody hard. I'll be, I'll be honest with you about that. But as you get going, it, uh, as you do these upgrades more and more, you become a little bit more powerful, a little bit more powerful, and it gets easier and easier as you go. There's also this storefront here, which you do not unlock right away. It takes uh, a little bit to, to do this, but you can see here... Uh, you earn these medallions that you can get as you go, which gives you different uh, different options. I've only got two so far. You can only equip one at a time, but you can change them whenever you like. So this is the one that I picked up here. Pickups do disappear after a while. You can see that. And you can buy these per run. So you can repeat the pyramid that you had before, uh, or you can get a, a scroll. We'll talk about scrolls later, but you can get a good scroll or a random scroll. So we'll talk about that as we go. So let's get into the pyramid here, and I'm going to show you what happens. So there is a huge number of weapons in this game. There's nine classes and I think 50-some weapons, or I may be misremembering that, but it's a lot. Each class starts with a certain set here, which you can switch between. And there are weapons that you can pick up uh, in the environment as you go as well. So, uh, yeah, so I couldn't spend 48 gold, so that's gone. And off we go here, where it's going to load in. So, the levels are not randomly generated, they are randomly assembled. So, all of the rooms are pre-configured, but it will generate you a new pyramid layout with those preset rooms every time you start. So, that's kind of what you want to uh, you take note of here. It's not fully procedurally generated. So, a lot of the levels will look familiar. Some people will like that, some people will not, but it definitely makes it... Uh, a little predictable in terms of it. once you've played this enough, there'll be rooms that you've seen before and you can kind of get an idea of what you're in for with that. And this is where the serious sand bit comes in. So unlike 
yeah, something like Ziggurat. Ziggurat had a lot of combat in it, don't get me wrong, but it also had platforming challenges and little puzzle rooms and other things like that. Immortal Redneck has that, but it is very much about the combat. There are challenge rooms that you will run into. There are rooms that are more about platforming, but they are few and far between compared to the room with this sort of standard objective, which is wipe out everything. This is going to be the majority of what you're doing is combat. They chose to make that the focus, and I don't mind that necessarily. It's, it's uh, you know, some people... I mean, roguelites vary so much outside of their core mechanics now with so many of them out there that you, you, there are a lot of options. So you really have to know the style of gameplay you're looking for. And uh, this one is, is, without a doubt, much more focused on the combat. So that's where you're gonna that's where you're gonna focus things. So the the enemies you're gonna see here as we go. I mean, there's weird frogs. There's like these weird sniper uh, demon things. There's just the enemy variety in this is quite substantial. The, various different enemy types with different types of attacks. Very different. Uh, oh geez, those yeah, those are spikes. So uh, I did recognize that. So various different enemies with different types of attacks with different. You know, the dynamite thing is not something I'm really a fan of because it's very inaccurate. But it does do a lot of damage if you can land it. Uh, the enemies vary very wildly, and uh, you'll have to learn a lot about each one in terms of how they attack, how they move, how they, uh, you know, how to manage crowd control with them, things like that. Now, so you're seeing here that I've got, uh, I, I do have health in the bottom left there. There are healing items that enemies will drop. Uh, they will drop these sort of meat things on a regular basis that will help you get back up. So unlike a lot of roguelike games where oh. health is extremely rare or indeed you never find whatsoever, definitely not the case here. This game hands it out fairly regularly along with ammo, though it, it is fairly random. So I have run into cases multiple times where I've either had to be really, really careful because I've been low on health or worse yet, uh, I was having to switch to guns that were not ideal for a given situation because it just wasn't dropping enough ammo. So I've increased the percentages through some of the upgrades, so that's not as bad as when I started out, but that's something you'll have to be be wary of as well. The, the thing is, is that this game, you will die a lot in this. I mean, you do in this genre in general, but especially for your first couple of hours, you're gonna be very lucky to get very far at all. You're not gonna get very, you might get through one floor, maybe two if you're very lucky. I mean, even at this point, I'm not getting much further than that. And you will be dying frequently and, you know, making iterative progress little bit by little bit in order to get yourself upgraded to where you can become more of a threat. And Rogue Legacy was very similar in that regard, but I would say this is more a bit more punishing than that was even. This uh, really kind of kicks the crap out of you at the beginning, and you, I, I want people to be aware of that because I think a lot of people might get frustrated by how, how tough this is, uh, how tough this can be early on. Um, so that's something you, you want to watch out for. I personally don't mind it that much because I I tend to like rogue lights more than rogue likes just because I do like that feeling of iterative permanent progress where even though the game is still very hard and is still demanding an awful lot of me, I can, you know, push forward and I can just feel myself getting a little bit better each time and I and I can be like, yeah, you know, I, I, I'm getting where, where the... Uh, I'm getting the benefit of it, and I don't feel like I just did a whole run, and it doesn't fit where, and I feel like I died because of bad luck, which don't get me wrong, you know, luck and random randomness is definitely part of this, but I like it when it feels like uh, things are getting better each time, and that a run, it, it takes some of the luck out of the equation and makes it so that every run is not wholly dependent on that. So I do like that quite a bit. Uh, it's a decent looker too. Uh, it, it runs in the Unity engine, and it's it's quite optimized. You know, Unity. I, I've talked about before how Unity is a great engine for creators. Frankly, not so much for players because it has a lot of performance problems. Uh, but uh, this seems pretty well optimized. This game, I, I like the look of it, and it's. Uh, I, I think it runs pretty well. Now, in terms of the presentation. Well, I think, the t to be frank about it, I think the title Immortal Redneck is probably not a very good one. It doesn't do a very good job of describing the game, and I don't know. The title comes across to me as something that you might see on more of an asset flip game. Um, also, the, 
I get that they were trying to go for a serious Sam vibe, but there there isn't a lot of dialogue in this. Your guy doesn't say very much. He does send off an occasional quip when he clears a room or takes out certain en types of enemies or uh, picks up certain weapons. I am generally not a fan of the writing and the dialogue. I think it's a lot of it's pretty cringy, and I just don't find it that funny. Mileage may vary on that, but it's few and far between, so it's not that big a deal. Um, oh, jeez. Here we go. So these guys I haven't seen too many of. There we go. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's you know it 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 runs well. It looks pretty good, and I, I really like the lighting in this. I like the way the uh, the the, the game's very colorful. Colors pop out very well, and it has a good balance of of difficulty and and solid progression. So you do feel like you're you're being rewarded for your patience, which I like. Uh, one of the things we haven't talked about yet, actually, is the uh, scrolls thing. So, I actually haven't picked any up yet. I frequently do see them dropped. But a scroll is, if you played Ziggurat, a scroll is basically a, a, a special ability. So, you'll pick it up and it will imbue you with various different things. Some scrolls are wholly positive. Some are sort of a mixed bag uh, that have like a positive and a drawback. And others are just straight up negative. So you can pick up a scroll, for example, that uh, one of the scrolls that I actually really like is a scroll called Vampire, which get, means you get a little bit of health back from each enemy you kill, and the amount of health you get back is dependent on the difficulty of the enemy. But uh, any meat you pick up doesn't heal you. So that's sort of the trade-off for that. There's other things as well that just give you uh, more, more power, the ability to jump higher, uh, things that make traversing a little easier that are wholly good things and you can also pick up curse scrolls as well uh one of the curse scrolls is something that um what was it that it did it uh, oh yeah there's a curse scroll you can pick up that makes it so that uh you only see the current room you're in on the mini map up there when you leave a room uh it gets removed from the map which can make things a little tricky so there's also a full map that you can bring up by pressing the tab key like that Ziggurat had this as well. Gives you a nice little layout of things. So I've done this floor. You don't have to complete every room in a floor in order to be able to leave. You, but you, you if you want to take the risk of obviously potentially dying more often, uh, you and you, but you can look around the rooms and get uh, more loot potentially and more gold and things like that that can help you later on. As you can see, up to a second floor, and the challenge has gone up. The enemy damage has gone up, as well as their health. So things will get tougher as you go. There are boss monsters in this. I have gotten to one boss. I did not kill him. Uh, and that's it. I got taken out there, so here you go. You have not reached the apex. So this is only one pyramid. As you can see, there's three in total. But this is the one you have to beat first before you go on. And it shows how many I killed. And then I come back to here and I can pick a different person. So we'll pick uh, Sekhmet this time and we'll do that. So yeah, so the scrolls give you give you different abilities like that. You also have your active and your passive skill. And I don't know why this is not the game's fault. This is wholly on me. I am terrible about using them. I always forget they're there and I always forget to trigger them. And I'm sure I could have gotten myself out of some hairy situations on the regular if I was just smarter about using that stuff. Again, don't ask me why that happens, I it's but it's totally on me. But using those skills is absolutely critical. So I'm gonna buy a good scroll when I go into the pyramid here so that you guys can see what I'm talking about. Um, I actually don't think I have enough to buy anything else. So actually, we'll just buy some other, we'll just buy another uh, regular scroll there. There we go, and, uh, and we'll do this. So you really, uh, you really do need to use your skills, and the fact that I'm not, I just don't know why. Maybe it's just maybe a left brain, right thing, brain thing. I really can't explain it. So here, troll's feet, lava, poison, etc. can't hurt you. That's a damn good one. So that was probably the, yeah. So here's another one that you could consider good or bad. Enemies explode when they die. These games are typically fair, so when an enemy explodes, I believe he will do damage to other enemies too, which is a good thing. Uh, one of the cursed scrolls that I picked up once that was really nasty was one that, so you see all these, these things you can run through, uh, all the vases and stuff that you can break. So you can, um, uh, they don't tend to, to benefit anything, like they don't drop anything, but I picked up a uh, skill card or a scroll once that actually made those things explode whenever you ran through them, and when you're trying to outrun enemies, sometimes it's a little hard to avoid. Yeah, that was a little fun when everything was exploding. I was taking a ton of damage in uh, ways I did not intend, which was really frustrating, but, uh, you know, that's the way the dice rolls in games like this sometimes. Now... 
all this said, now, a p critical opinion on this game has been pretty mixed. Some people have really loved it. Other people like Total Biscuit. I haven't watched his video, but the dev was telling me apparently Total Biscuit actually ripped this game to pieces. Uh, he didn't like anything about it. I actually am enjoying it quite a bit. But I am going to say it does have some problems, but I think some of them may be getting addressed later on because I found out today that in the not too distant future from when I'm recording this, a big patch is coming uh, that is going to be reworking a lot of the balance and redoing all the weapon systems and a lot of other things. And I'm hoping that will help because the problems that I have right now, unfortunately, are a little bit core in nature to the gameplay. So... One of the things I'm not a fan of is I don't think the weapons fire very fast. They don't feel like they've got a lot of kick. They just don't, like, when you're trying to fill <clears throat> to shoot a large group of enemies quickly, it often feels like the weapons are just a little bit too slow versus how quick the enemies move. It makes crowd control very, very difficult. Okay, so there. Yeah, this is a weird, like, uh, fireball thing that... Uh, Sekhmet has that has a very weird fire rate, but it will actually go out and attack Phaser multiple sword. enemies. Phaser sword? Phoenix. Okay, hang on. Phaser sword, you say? Oh, yeah, that thing. Okay, I remember double that. Pistols. The double pistols are a good thing to have. This sort of onk thing, which shoots a spell out, I don't really like because it doesn't do a lot of damage. So you can see there's her sort of fire ability. So this guy also drops something. So enemies are dropping a ton of weapons. Yeah. Let's go to school. You don't need no stinking gun when you got talent. And there's what I'm telling you about the writing. Yeah, it's a little cringy. The voice actor actually, I think, does a pretty good job. I don't know who it is, but they, I think they actually do a pretty good job. I just, the writing, it doesn't do it for me. It's just, it's, it's, I, it's not very good humor. It's just, I don't know, not, not to my taste. But uh, yeah, so some of the, the major problems I have with the uh, gameplay in particular is, okay, so here's a mission. Uh, so this is a This is one of the challenge rooms. So my goal here is to reach the chest, presumably without dying. But this is a little bit of a platforming challenge. There are rooms where you have to complete the challenge without getting hurt. That can be a little tricky, uh, but we're going to see what we can do here. So yeah, I don't like the fire rate. Uh, sometimes you'll get swarmed by groups of enemies that move very fast, and you just plain can't crowd control very well, especially if you were if you the the weapon set that you have is not great. So let's see what we got here. An Illuminati will follow you and help you on your adventure. Uh, I don't know what that is, but okay. Electric flame floor. Okay, yeah, we're gonna keep that one. This is a, this can be a fun one in crowd control situations. Also, no fall damage. So because you're dead, so wee! yeah, so you can you can traverse around pretty quick. So the fire rate I don't like. The other biggest complaint I have right now is that the game is terrible at providing you feedback as to what's around you. So. Pretty much every enemy at this, with the exception of sort of the sniper ones, comes straight at you, right? So, and that's very much like Serious Sam. Everything, here it is. So, well, that didn't work in my favor at all. I wasn't paying attention there. So, uh, let's go with God of Storms. So, yeah, the enemies tend to, will, will tend to swarm you. And that's fine. That's tense, that, That's the way a lot of these things work. I don't really have a problem with that. But the biggest issue that I have is the fact that you have no feedback about that. It's very hard through just audio cues to hear what's around you. And the game doesn't give you any indication as to where enemies are out of your field of view. Now, I don't expect it to put up arrows everywhere saying, hey, there's exactly this many enemies on exactly this many angles, and here's how far they are away from you. But when you're trying to control a crowd that's in front of you, and you all of a sudden are like, oh, crap, why am I getting hit from the back? Often that's because of enemies that spawned in that you didn't even know were there before they were on top of you because you were too busy clearing out something else. That gets really frustrating. I've had multiple moments where I've been like, well, if I'd have just had some indication that they were behind me, even just a little, like a halo or something, to not even indicate how many enemies or what enemies were behind me, but just that there was something, there's something there, like just a tiny little ring or something to indicate that, hey, there is, it could be one enemy, it could be a dozen, and it could be various different types, but it, just to say, hey, there's something back here, you want to make sure you spin around and check. That would be really nice because far too many times I've taken damage and or died in a situation where I really had no idea that the enemy where the enemies were or where they were coming from. And it just got oh we got a chest here. Okay, so that's just ammo and money. And that really frustrated me. I think like I said, it doesn't have to telegraph everything, but it needs to give you some little hint of where things are. 
Uh, it's also the game is also very bad at tutorializing. That may be by design, but there there's pretty much no tutorial in it whatsoever. Uh, it kind of leaves you to figure everything out on your own. That said, you know, yes, I play a lot of video games and know know the drill, but I it, also I don't think figuring out the mechanics is that difficult. I never really had any trouble with that. Phoenix. Yeah, let's go with electric flame floor. Dang it. No. Tesla coil. All right, you know what? I don't need the sword. So, uh, yeah, so I had, uh, I didn't have any trouble figuring that out, but a lack of tutorials, especially with regards to the how the scrolls work and uh, things like that, would have been would have been nice. Uh, oh, right, this gun chains off. Okay, that's always nice too. Sweet. Yeah. Uh, so that would be that. That would be nice to see. Is a a little bit of a way to reveal special rooms. Oh, interesting. Uh, a little bit of a a way to better manage crowds like that. I think would go a long way personally. Um, and yeah, I think the weapons need better fire rates and just better feedback in general. But a lot of this does seem to be coming in mission. Don't get hurt. Oh, good lord. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a lot of these changes do seem to be coming in the big 1.2 update that is going to be entering testing soon. I debate. Whoa! I, I haven't seen one of these before. Hi, how you doing? Oh man! And I made it. Sweet! And I get two chests out of it. Uh, now let's. Critical gold. Critical hits release a gold coin. All right, I leaked that. And there's meat and ammo. Sweet! All right, that was totes worth it. And you can see here these trap rooms power down when you get to the end, so you don't have to worry about trying to get through a hazardous trap to get yourself out again, which is always nice. And here's the next room, so we're just going to get ourselves out of here. So, But you get the idea here. I mean, yes, this is another roguelite, but I think it's a good one, and it, 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 it wears its inspiration on its sleeve. You know, the devs straight up cited Ziggurat, Rogue Legacy, and Serious huh? Sam to me. And their inspirations are on their sleeve, but you know what? They're good inspirations. Those games are considered very good for a reason, and something that can combine various elements of them, I like I like quite a bit. Uh, I do think that there could be some gameplay tweaks made that could certainly make things a little bit easier, especially with regards to weapons and crowd control. But the dev has been d d very, very receptive to that, and he uh, they seem to be focused on 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 making this better and and spending you know putting some real effort into it and sticking with it for the long haul which is what i always like to see and uh, yeah for a team that's pr predominantly made smaller mobile games for their first attempt to branch out into something bigger i think they they did something pretty cool here and yeah i mean roguelites are uh, a dot they're a dime a multi dozen these days frankly rewards take longer to disappear oh, nice you know, there, these things are kind of a, a dime, a, a multi-dozen these days. There are so many roguelites out there. But the thing that I like is that roguelikes and roguelites are are really just a very straightforward core gameplay concept that you could still do a lot with, right? And that you can still put a lot of your own spin on. And the ones that I have been really enjoying are the elements of... This map of the current floor, sweet. The one, the the ones in this genre that I really do enjoy are the ones that try to do something different with the formula, and uh, they did that here by taking stuff that yes has been done before, but hasn't necessarily been done a lot, and sort of mashing a few things together to make something that kind of stands on its own. And uh, I like that. I I'm, uh, you know, I can understand. It. Roguelites are are very subjective because there's so much variety in them. You're not going to like every one. And if yeah, if I don't necessarily disagree or not disagree, but uh, I do disagree with the critics who didn't like this personally. But I can also see why this may not be a fit for everyone. But I've been enjoying it a lot actually, and I'm probably oh yeah abilities right. Yeah, I always forget to friggin' use those. Oh god. I, I've been enjoying this a lot, actually. I, this this was sort of a pleasant surprise. I never heard of this game before the dev reached out to me, and uh, I've been actually uh, been having a lot of fun with it. I played it a fair bit. But I played this more before recording a video than I typically do, uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna keep working on it. Will I ever finish it? I don't tend to finish a lot of these games. I never finished Rogue Legacy either. Uh, I just tend to, you know, I finish a lot of games, but this this genre is one that I just tend to sort of hit a wall on with most titles. But I always enjoy myself getting there, and I think that's going to be very much the case with this one as well. It's uh, It's been a really good time, and uh, I'm... Uh 
I'm enjoying it quite a bit. And uh, I think if you're into roguelites and if you're into, you know, first person shooters, definitely. Um, and if you're into uh, roguelites and you like something that that does give you gives you a lot of options to level yourself up and get get progression that's permanent and allows you to make iterative progress, but also really customize that experience as you go along. This will very much do that for you. There's no shortage of depth here, and there's no shortage of ways to play it your own way. You know, that you don't, you, this definitely doesn't shoehorn you down one particular path in order to be successful at it, which is something I, uh, I very much appreciate. Uh, so yeah, that is Immortal Redneck, developed and published by Crema in 2017. It is out on PC, Mac, and Linux for $20. It's on Steam, it may be on other services as well, I haven't actually checked. But uh, first person roguelike, there's a lot of them. This is a good one, in my opinion. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you liked what you saw here, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. That does help me out a great deal. If you want to watch something else, check out the videos on screen now. And don't forget to follow at PXA Media on Twitter to find out about new stuff first.